Hi students, so the next thing we might be asked to do is to show that two digital logic circuits are actually equal, that they implement the same logic. So let me show you an example of a problem that looks like that. Suppose we have, um, I'm going to write my inputs in this vertical orientation like that. So suppose we have inputs A, B, and C, and um, let's say our circuit looks like this. We've got these and ORed, we've got A and B anded. Let's say um, this result is ORed with not C, and then these two results are then anded to give us F. And let's say there is another logical circuit that implements the function G looks like this. And let's see, these guys are or together. And this gives us G. So here's just an example of um, two logical functions, F and G, that are implemented with two different circuits. Um, I wrote them together in one array just so they could pull from these inputs since we use A, B, and C multiple times. So you can practice writing your digital circuits in a format like this. So the first thing we want to do, if we want to show that f and g are equal to each other, is um, we want to translate the circuit diagrams to equations. Okay, so the way we do that is we're going to start from left and go to the right. And we're just going to uh, systematically see what is happening to the inputs and what's happening to those results. So for F, we have that A and C are getting ORed. Then we also have that A and B are getting ANDed. And the result of A and B ANDed is ORed with not C. So ORed with C not, and then this result, the result of this, is then ANDed with um, this OR here. I'm sorry, this is, should be an AND. So that's an AND. So this gives us our function for F. Let me just write that. This is A or C ANDed with A, B, OR, C not. Okay, great. And then for our G function, we look at the what's happening over here in this second half of the array. So we have A and B anded. And we also have A and C not anded together. And then these two results are then ORed. So I can write G as a, B, or A, C, not. Okay, so I have my two functions. I have F and I have G. So that was my first step. So then the second step is I want to take one of these functions, not both, just one. I'm going to take one function and I'm going to do Boolean algebra on it. until it looks identical to the other function. Okay, so I'm going to take f. f is a or c anded with a, b, or c not. And now I'm going to just do algebra on just this f function. And I know I'm done when, after all my steps, I get something that looks just like g. Okay, great. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this function. This is going to give me, if I FOIL it, a times ab, a times ab. The outside is ac0. The inside is cab. And the last is cc0. Now, A ended with A is just A, so I can just write one A here. This is A, C naught. This is C, A, B. C ended with C naught is just zero. So I have this. 
Now, if I, if I don't worry about that zero term, but I notice that um, I have a, an AB common to this and to this, then I can factor an AB out. So I factor an AB out of this first term, I get one. I factor an AB out of this term, I get a C, and then I still have this or a C naught. Now the simplification I can make is this. Anytime you or something with one, you just get one. So this is AB anded with one or a C naught. So anything anded with one is just gonna be the original anything. So this gives us AB or a C naught. And if I look up here, this is exactly the G function. Um, so if you have any questions about this, um, the process is looking at the gate array. We first make our equations and then we pick one of them and we do Boolean algebra to make it look like the other one and then we're done.